Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about front-end, so let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I have a weird theoretical question. Do you think we will ever get to a point where web development is so mature that the invention of new frameworks and libraries will slow down? Will we ever get to a point where web development, specifically front-end, has a standard of best practices that the community follows? Well, depending on how you look at it, we're kind of already there, but I understand that you I understand your question. Uh, the thing that I believe will happen is the thing that happened with jQuery and the browser wars. I think that the same thing is going to happen for the current frameworks, such as React, Angular, Vue, and so forth. What usually happens is that you need to have some group who goes and solves a problem of some sort. They create a private version of whatever, right? In the old days, it used to be jQuery, where the browsers were, uh, let's just say it, let's call it like it is, it, the APIs were horrible. They were inconsistent, everybody hated working with the UI and front end and all that stuff because basically there was no consistency between the versions. And by using a library such as jQuery, the entire community of uh, front end related developers could finally have a consistency. They could do a lot of the stuff that they wanted to do. And the, I will still to this day say that jQuery is probably the single most important library that JavaScript has ever had. It, I cannot imagine any library being more important for the development of uh, the language. It is equivalent, in, I can, no, it's even big, bigger than that. It's like what, what Express did for Node without the, or Ru, uh, Rails did for Ruby. It's such a, the, or .NET with C Sharp. It's such a, in, it's so important. It was so important for the success of uh, JavaScript. And what ha then happened was the thing that I think is gonna happen f next, which is that the people who invested a lot into jQuery and actually started using it, well, they started influencing the standards and people, who, because that's usually how it goes. If you have a standard, because standards, guys, it takes a long time to create a standard. You need to synchronize so many people and think about all these different corner cases and it's just a long damn process to get to that point, but it's worth the investment. And so you have someone who goes out and makes something and that's, I think that that's the true balance, that's the true, the true power of the web, where you create a platform that is flexible enough that someone can actually do that. You allow some upstart group who just kind of goes, yeah, you know what, this is a real problem. Let's go and build something to see if we can make this work. And then they go out and do an experiment and it takes off. It becomes this super, super amazing thing. And then the people who are sitting on the standards, they kind of go, you know what? They're doing some really awesome stuff over there. Maybe this should actually be in the standard. Let's talk about it. Let's see where we can arrive with the concepts that they have discovered. And so those learnings can now start to make their way into the standard. And if you look at the browser APIs today, I'm not crediting jQuery to for everything. I'm just saying that the inspiration has moved the standard in the right direction that came from that library. Not exclusively, there are others as well, but it was definitely a major player. And that is exactly what I think is gonna happen next. Because today, it's practically point pointless to use jQuery. I mean, you can use it, it's just that it, the browsers are at the point where if you're, unless you're doing something very specific, you will be just fine using the actual APIs. In, many, in some cases, they're actually more powerful than jQuery. In some cases not, but it, it's up to a good level now. It, the browsers got some love. They actually got uh, got to a point where they need to be. And for SPA types of applications, I think that the same thing will happen. I believe that, I mean, I'm not saying that web components is gonna be the thing. I'm saying that we're moving in that direction. It, there's a very clear need to take the web to the next level. Some people are saying that it's gonna be WebAssembly. I am still on the fence here. I think that the, the WebAssembly will ha will potentially have a impact, but we thought the same thing about WebGL, like there are other, there have been other attempts to do this thing, 
that is not specifically WebAssembly. It may work, it may not work, it may take over, it may not, like it may be partially taking over for certain types of applications. And so, but the one thing that we can probably agree on is that JavaScript is not in any short, uh, in a f it's not going anywhere in quite a while. Because the, it, even if you were to rewrite everything in WebAssembly today, like the transition will take years, years and years and years. And in some cases, you don't even want the WebAssembly experience on the web. There's all these other parts that needs to fit into place in order for that to happen. But with that said, I believe that the, the standards for how we do SBA work is going to develop to the point where we don't actually need a framework such as React or Angular or Vue or whatever, unless we really want to. Because, and I think that honestly, I mean, they are solving a real problem today that really uh, we do depend on these, li these uh, frameworks for a very good reason, because we simply don't have a better way of doing it. But I promise you, the second we can get the standard to a point where it becomes more of an optional thing, where because I mean it's actually in everybody's interest I will argue at the very least it's not a good idea to have all this extra code and all these frameworks that needs to be doing all this stuff that we want to do in the browser because if the browser can already be shipped with this support out of the box we're shipping less code everything's more consistent education and all this sort of stuff that you get for free when you have a clear standard all that stuff is coming our way if we can get to that point it's gonna take a while and I don't know who's going to be the biggest influence in all of this. At a, I would say, I don't think, I, I'm not saying that that's the case. The only framework in front and right now that I think has the right idea on where we should be moving is Polymer, actually. Uh, it's not seeing the adoption of React and Angular. And, I mean, that, so that's a big that's a big factor. The political aspect is a big factor. But at least Polymer is attempting to simply l put a layer on top of web components and trying to just be something that we can s switch out for the standard once it gets up to that point. And I hope that we will reach that point at some, some, t some, some point in time, right? Uh, uh, but the other part to this is like, do you think that we will ever get to a point where we are using standards of best practices and that the community is following these standards. I think that we will get there in terms of tooling. I don't think we will ever get there in terms of ex user experience, ever. I don't think the web will ever get to that point. The reason why I don't think we will ever get to that point is because uh, we are in the visual space and we have a constant conflict between what the designers want, like what web designers and like their like their community and what they're doing and they're inventing new ways of making better user experiences and like all these things. And then you have stakeholders, what do they want? They want customization, they want branding, they want to stand out, they want to create a corporate identity, all these things. And then we are the developers, I mean we really only want the drag and drop solutions if it could be possible. Like we want to like like an ops person, you want stabi stability so that you can trust the code. These three different groups, we are always in a constant struggle for dominance or for like finding a sweet spot. And I don't think we will ever get to a point where the developers or like the front end engineers or whoever just wins and say, yeah, well, there is a there is a button element and that's going to be good enough. We're always going to have to customize. So what I want you to take away from this is that I believe that the thing that happened with jQuery is going to happen for SBAs as well. We're going to get to a point where the the browsers and the standards will catch up and that's the natural order of things and I think, I mean, even when we get to that point, the next thing is going to come along where you have someone who goes out and does an experiment to see can we solve this problem from our, for our community it becomes a success and then it gets some uh, gets some notice from the people who are actually implementing the standards and so when it becomes stable enough they start moving towards that thing and sooner or later the thing uh, the the standard catches up and it becomes the new standard and by that time somebody has already found another problem that we're going to go and try to solve and then the whole thing continues right I think that's going to happen, but I don't think we will ever get to a point where we have like a completely standardized way of doing web work. I don't think we will ever completely agree on how to how to structure a web page or how to style things by default and like all that stuff. It's not, because it's too subjective, and there are too many stakeholders that have very vastly different perspectives on what's important uh, to that for that to ever happen. But at the very least, I think that we will be able to standardize the technical tools we use to create those custom experiences. Have a great day.